Hey, this is Rob. And John. And Steve. And Brian. Of Division 1.1. And you are listening to SMD Podcast on the Schmucks Sports Network. Welcome to episode 43 of the SMD Podcast show on the Schmuck Sports Network. Steven is here. Dan is here. What's going What's on? What's up? Tonight? It's the best time of the year. It's week one. Week one. We're less than 24 hours away while we record on 9-4 from game one. The Broncos hosting the defending Super Bowl champions, Ravens. We won't even get into why they're hosting. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that in our football segment. But before we start the show... Steve, uh, pretty awesome stuff we just heard. Yes, um, Division 1.1. Thank you to them. Uh, killer promo. They're in the studio, so they had some time uh, out of their busy schedule to shoot us a little promo for our show. It was a very nice present from them. Yes. Uh, Steve sent me the email, and I was like, ooh, nice. That's pretty awesome. So yes. thanks, for that. thanks for the plug, guys. I greatly appreciate it. Keep and, up the good hard work. And after you heard the promo, you heard through it all. By Division 1.1, which is this week's song. Uh, also, just a little heads up, uh, if you follow us on Instagram, I wore the hat last week while we recorded. And uh, they also have a nice denim t-shirt. Uh, if you are interested, they have large and XL t-shirt sizes for 20 bucks and for $10 the hats. If you're interested, let us know. We can definitely hook you up with that stuff. Of course. Um, we have a pack show. It is week one. This is the first time we're going to do... Local football and another sport. Yeah, <laughs> it's cra- It's crazy to think about that, but yeah. It's, uh, you know what else is crazy to think about? It's almost been a year. Yeah, it's almost been a year. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's crazy <laughs> how uh, how far away, how far of how we've come from last year. Just you mean when we used our Apple headphones? Yeah, <laughs> that long ago. And now we have mics and a mixer and everything like that. Uh, a lot has changed. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I thank hope you it, for bearing with us, everybody. Yeah, it's been a lot of long process to say the very least. Long. So, <laughs> and we're we're nowhere near where we want to be. So, we're still hungry. The, the minds are still rolling. Every day we go to each other with new ideas. It's a lot of good things coming up. We're gonna have a hockey preview show in a couple of weeks. We're gonna have an NBA preview show in a couple of weeks. A lot to do. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, anyway, let's let's start the show. Let's do this. Let's, let's do this. Let's get through show. this show. Uh, let's start off with a little Mets baseball. <laughs> Welcome back to the S and D podcast. Dan here with Steve. You just listened to through it all by Division One Point One. Let's switch gears a little bit to, uh, and talk about a little bit of baseball action. Steve, how about those Metsies? They uh, f- salvaged the game of the three-game series against the Braves today. They are winning 1-5-2. to two. Dylan G having another awesome start. Since the middle of July, he has just shutting down people, and it's awesome to see. Especially, he's supposed to be our fifth starter when all things are going right. Right now, he's really pitching like our second, or maybe he, arguably like our nace right now. And it's really impressive to see, especially like how I said how shaky he was at the beginning of the year with the injury he had last year that could have killed him ultimately. Um, he's come back and taking care of business, no pun intended, to the Mets song. But it's it's really awesome to see our young talent coming up and producing and finding ways to contribute on a daily basis. Guys like Dylan G., Especially like Dylan G, you don't expect Dylan G. That he he isn't like the Zach Wheeler, Matt Harvey, um, even the John Neese standpoint of prospects when they came up to play with the Mets. He's always been that good, serviceable player, but now he's actually turning it into him his own self and just on a hot streak right now that is on other unprecedented uh, compared to other pitchers right now with the Mets. You know who else gets the props for being hot is Daniel Murphy, last Murph week's players, National League Player, player of the Week. week. Of course, he he he's been playing red hot. I have him on one of my fantasy teams. Granted, they haven't been doing so great this year, but he's finally got hot this didn't, year. They didn't Lagares win something also not rookie of the week, but I think like what this this week? I think he won like defensive player of the month. Yeah, well he 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 deserved it. He he's playing lights out outfield. Um, until Den Decker came up last weekend, he's actually played at center field a lot. He's been moved to right. So it's really been interesting to see what Terry Collins has been doing, mixing and matching the young lineup 
everyday roster. Granted, we're not playing for much. They're they're just playing spoiler for the rest of the season. But the Mets are really fighting and giving everything they got to finish out the season. And that ultimately is going to be reflects on Terry Collins. And I think he's going to remain the Mets manager this year, next season. I think they... There's, there's really no reason to let him go. Let him go. Uh, and he deserves it. Uh, I think if we are able to give him a, a real Major League Baseball team for once next season, we might be able to make the playoffs next year. If, yeah. if all things go right and Harvey is healthy and everything like that, of course. Not to jump any guns right now, but... You heard it here first, everybody. <laughs> no, are... no, no, no. <laughs> just kidding. Nah. Uh, but, but why not kind of thing? Um, if if the Mets are, like they say, they are able to spend money, we can get better on the certain positions that we desperately need to help in. Like the first base, we need... Um, well, catcher, we're good now at Darno. We're going to stick with him for the long haul. It would be very interesting to see what they do with Murphy during the offseason. Honestly. He's almost like due for a contract. He is, yeah, he's not I a free agent. He's not. I, he's I feel like he's near. got arbitration this year. He's got to be at least I, arbitration. I don't think so this year. He still has one more a year or two in it. I, I agree with you because it feels like he hasn't been in the w- water yet. I know Ike's in arbitration this year. But it's going to be interesting to see. I, I wish they could move him back to first base and have Flores go back to his natural position. It's arbitration 2014. So next season. Yeah. So I could see a few players be trade bait and us finding ways to get a decent player along with free agency. And Andy Murphy would unfortunately be one of those players. Actually, he's first year eligible this se- this this year. Okay. This is for the 14 off season. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's this year that you get two years of arbitration before you're a free agent. Okay. In 2016, he could be. A free I would. Agent. I would. The Mets are gonna resign him, and they're not gonna reach arbitration. I, I highly doubt that. It's gonna be also interesting because now you're gonna get you're gonna get right back. You're gonna have Flores. It, it's gonna be a cluster next year, but it's gonna be interesting to see what how they the put Met, it together. What the Mets brass is gonna do to mold and gel everything together. Ah. Uh, but that that's the exciting part of being a baseball general manager and a Met fan and just an overall baseball fan. You get to see what teams do in the off season and how they can shape into the next season. Uh it's thank God we don't have uh Terry uh, no, I'm sorry, uh Sandy Alderson's job for uh mixing a match in and this whole salary thing. I said it before because I'm interested to see what Alderson does. In Oakland, he was never handed a boatload of money and said, here, go spend money. And we brought him in to be a payroll deductor, basically, which is exactly what he did. Now we're going to tell him, okay, let's go spend some money. Here's money. Spend it. It's going to be really interesting to see if he spends it, how he spends it. You know, a guy, you give a guy money, you get a, a general manager, Brian Cashman, you tell him to give him money, he's going to go out and sign the top guys. Of course. You give a guy like Omar Manaya, you saw him. Top guys, he'd give as much money as he could to them. Give him, yeah, and some of them didn't pan out. So it's it's interesting to see how how he will finally have that chance to spend some money. And he's a kind of a conservative guy over all around the all overall as as a human being. Right. So I could see him making the right decisions and making doing his due diligence. Um, for doing that sort of moves. I know what they say when it comes to bullpens. It, it's basically a hit or miss with the guys. Crap shoot, yes. But the past couple of years, basically, he's been putting the money that we do have to spend in guys for the bullpen, mm-hmm. for the most part. Now, with the actual money, it'll be very interesting to see if he goes not towards that low B, high C level bullpen guys, but really only goes after high B, low A ceiling type bullpen guys. I mean, I don't have the list of free agents in front of me, of course. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, of course. So, I mean, I'm not going to give you a list of names I want. Of course, there are outfielders I want. There are guys like Ellsbury or even Sinshu Chu is supposed to be out there. But you know what? You look at the outfield. Yeah, Eric Young Jr. is probably a four. Yeah, he, he's da- he's, I think he's a four in most rosters. He's going to be serviceable for the Mets, um, especially if someone was to go down on the DL for 15 days, he's able to play those 15 games or whatever, how long it takes. But after a while, he's he's going to be very – he's a very streaky hitter. Yes. Course, but you need that spark plug to come off the bench and play those random days. Uh, cause, cause a stir in the lineup and 
get some cheap runs and everything like that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I actually like Eric Young. He's, he's our modern day version of Moogie Wilson. Um, pretty much the same kind of player who could play every, all three outfield positions and just be able to slap hit and get on base and score runs. And that's what we need. So it's going to be nice to see the, how the Mets are starting to mold things. So, um, <laughs> Let's let's instead of talking about the future, let's see what the Mets are what the Mets have coming up this week. Hopefully not Dice K. Hopefully not Dice K is right. They're they're actually in Cleveland for the next three games. Which starting is starting a Friday. That's gonna be an interesting series. The Friday pitching matchups even more interesting than the whole series. Yeah. Casimir and Wheeler. Yeah, that's kind of a like a blast from the past kind of week. Us uh, your your young stud. Ten years ago, uh, Steve. When Steve mentioned me the pitching matchup for Friday, I was like, "Wow!" But that's the parents. Can you can you imagine that was ten years ago? That we traded Scott Cashmere, and he was like Victor yeah, Zambrano for Victor Zambrano. So it, it's it, that was Duquette, right? Yes, that was Duquette. Okay. So it was it was just it was just weird that our main top prospect is going to be facing our top prospect ten years ago. <laughs> And the Mets got really lucky that he didn't turn into a stud. Well, he did for a couple of years. Yeah, but it's nothing like they were supposed. He was supposed to be. You just gotta. Now we just have to hope Wheeler doesn't turn into that too. Yes, hopefully not. So, but yeah, that matchup's interesting. I mean, I know they have uh, Dice K as of right now down for Sunday, mm-hmm. which is kind of upsetting. I think he's gonna get the start, and he's gonna get torched, and then he's gonna get D eight after the game, or move to the pen. You mean you got the. Ex- and the rousers. Yeah. There's no reason to. I mean, they they found a, a coincidence. They actually signed um, Aaron Harang, Mets. Yeah, I saw that. And he actually pitched Monday also, Vegas. Mm-hmm. Now they weren't sure if it was an extra arm for Vegas because they're in the playoffs, blah blah blah. But yeah, they do have three minor league teams in the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good sign for the Mets minor league system. When uh, Sandy came to the Mets organization, there was there, no minor league. There leagues. was no minor league system, and it was very bare. So it's really awesome to see that we're finally growing as a franchise, and young arms and bats and everything are on their way. Yeah. So that just is kudos to the developmental staff and drafting and finding players. And you know who's one the of the staff? people you got to credit to is Terry Collins. Terry Collins a few years back, yeah. He, he was a big part of the minor league system for a couple of years. Um, he was down there. He was developing guys. He was teaching them. It was very interesting that now they're all coming up and that's why he's definitely going to be around next year in my view because he knows these guys probably better than anybody that you could ever bring in. Unless unless something happens with the 51s and Backman just wins the title there. I see. I see the Mets could do something silly like that. I could end up seeing the, Willie Backman be the bench coach next year. Okay, and then groom him into the next year or something like that. Not groom him, but if they struggle, like because mid-season I, job. I think because I think the Mets when the Mets are gonna contend for a title Two or years. for for a so, chance or or something, they need a guy like Wally Backman's fiery fired, guy. Yeah. fiery guy to like get pump up the team and light a. Firecracker up their butts, so, sort of thing. That's going to be my prediction as of right now, as of September fourth. It's going to be Wally Backman's going to be the bench coach for Terry Collins next year, and if something goes wrong during the year and Collins isn't and they're not winning, Backman will be the interim head coach for the rest of the season, interim manager. I wouldn't see that because they're not going to fire uh, their bench coach now, Garen. Um, it would just be one of those call them up from minor leagues kind of thing. I could see that happening. Isn't there like 800 managers in baseball anyway? Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so it's it, hopefully Terry keeps it up. Uh, the, eh. the Mets, the Mets have the Mets have a good shot to take do some damage and be the be the spoiler in a lot of pennant races because we play the Nats a few times and, I, and, then, and then we play the Reds. Other than that, the rest is just Marlins, Giants, Phillies, Brewers. Woo! So, so exciting. So never mind. Uh, Actually, I, I think it was this morning. Evan Roberts said it the best. The Yankees are really big Mets fans this week. They are because the Indians. Because of the Indians, they're what? I think the game difference in the wild card standings, if I remember correctly. Um, well, that means the Mets are not going to do anything, and the Yankees are going to be very. Cle- at us. Cleveland's a game back of the Yankees in the wild card right now. Interesting. So. Right now, the American League wild card is either Oakland or Texas in spot one because they're tied for the division. 
And Tampa and two, and the Yankees are two and a half games back. They were what, eleven? Yeah. Three weeks ago? Yeah, the Yankees are Yankees are back. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk about transition. Why don't we talk some Yankees now? Yeah, let, let's talk about the Yankees. Uh the Yankees this week uh actually have turned out to be beating on the uh shitty team. Uh with the uh Chicago White Sox in town. Uh Especially last night's game. They were just nowhere to be found the whole entire game. They, Chris Sale finally gets out of the game, and then they come back and win. That's because Chris Sale's an elite guy. Yeah, that, 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 that's my point. <laughs> it, it Chris an, Sale's one of those pitchers that when he pitches, you're you're not going to... Yeah, exactly. And then they, they, uh, they came through in the clutch, and they found a way to win after their big shellacking the night before. Um... CC Sabathia is actually having a good performance tonight, which was desperately needed. Yeah, he's been on milk cartons, milk cartons C-C. all over New York City the last. It's pretty much the majority of the season, and it's it's definitely frustrating to see right now. And it's like, what the hell? This is not CC Sabathia of old that everybody knows and loves. So it's been one of those things. The Yankees are just they need that extra push that uh, we've been talking about the last few weeks. I'm going to tell you this. If CC starts to find it again, going into October, they make it into October. And they're going to... They, they're, they're a dangerous team. They're October. a very dangerous team. And we've learned that recently it's not the top teams that win. It's the hottest teams in all sports. Yeah, I, I, I hate to say it's over, but it's over. It's the top of the bottom of the seventh, and the Yankees are winning 6-1. CC has seven innings, three hits, one run, four strikes, so, four walks. So <laughs> that's vintage CC. I feel like Michael Cole when he talks about uh, Randy Orton, but that is vintage uh, CC Sabathia right there. <laughs> so so uh, they, they got to keep it going. They just need to get that push. And I think this weekend might start it a little bit at a home stand against the Red Sox, the four game set, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a heavyweight fight. The Yankees don't want to go down swinging against their main divi- division rivals. Here, here is this is this this next week is going to make or break the Yankees season. Okay. The Yankees play four against the Red Sox, mm-hmm. four against the Orioles in Baltimore. The and Red it, Sox are at home. Red Sox are at Yankee Stadium. Correct. Yeah. Okay. But I didn't I didn't finish the week. It's going to be this is going to be a crazy stretch. Four against the Red Sox at home and four against the Orioles in Baltimore. And then three in Fenway Park, and then and then 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 oh crazy two weeks I apologize. Then they play the stretch three game series at Toronto. So this is make it or break it time for the Yankees. If the Yankees find a way to win all three of these series, the Yankees are back in the division race, and they might even win the might be able to win the division. I have the pitching matchups for the weekend, the four games. Okay, shoot. Thursday night, Nova and PV. Okay. That's going to be a good pitching matchup. Nova was the August pitcher, American League pitcher of the month, by the way. And, and he showed up on Sunday. And he and he showed up huge for Sunday, coming through in the clutch for the Yankees. Sunday? they No, Sunday he It wasn't didn't. the Sunday. It was Monday then. I apologize. Yeah, Sunday they lost. Monday is oh, the they, game they won. Okay, so it was the no, game. No, no, no. Monday is the game that they played. Um, they were playing the White Sox, and it rained. Saturday was Nova's game. You're Saturday thinking, was the complete no game. game. All right, I'm sorry. Yes. Monday was the game that Hughes started. Yeah, Bill, Hugh, Hughes, Hughes started. Is, got uh, rocked. Hughes got demoted to the Bill Fen today, by the way. So did finally, he? Yes. Okay, because it's Nova PV Thursday. Friday night is Pettit and Dubron. Okay. Explains why Huff versus Lackey is Saturday. Yep. That would have been uh, what's his name? That would have been Hughes' start. Yeah. Yes. And then to end the series, Rhoda versus Lester. Mm-hmm. That's a good matchup. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, get your tickets. Get your tickets. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be a lot of tickets and everything to be sold for that. So, so there's a lot of scalpers trying to get rid of their tickets to those games right now. Definitely, 100%. What do you think the Yankees are going to do? <sighs> they're going to split. You think they're going to go 2-2? Two two? Yeah. No, The Nova PV game and the Leicester Corota game can go either way. Mm-hmm. The other two games... The other two games. I feel like they the Red Sox have the advantage with Lackey on Saturday, mm-hmm. even though Huff is. I think it was yeah, it was Evan Roberts again was comparing Huff to uh, what was his name who went like ten and one a couple years ago. The Yankees. Yeah. Um, Sterling. Um, uh, Aaron remember. Small. Aaron Small. Yes. That's who he was comparing him to. It's a little short of a, a thing, but he's comparing him to him. So that can go either way, and the Pettit 
the Braun matchup can also go either way. Absolutely. The Yankees could take three out of four, mm-hmm. being they, they, Saturday they, the loss. They, yeah, they can definitely take three out of four, but I'm being realistic, and they're going to split it. Okay. Like I said, the Yankees need that push, and the Red Sox are just going to have pride. So it's, it's going to be a tough foot split. It's going to be an interesting week. Um, of course, then they go to Baltimore, who is probably the coldest team in baseball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now, right now, Baltimore and the Rays have bought the Yankees back into uh, to, to. They gave them the silver alive. platter. Yeah. They opened up a silver platter and said, here, go the make ra- the playoffs. The Rays are finally cold, too. Um, Which will make the end of the year more interesting to see if the Red, if the Rays can wake up again. They have yes. a three-game series later in the year at Yankee Stadium. That should be interesting. Um, it's going to be a fun weekend for the Yankees. It could be a fun weekend for the Yankees. It could be. It's it's going to be a fun two weeks. The Yankees, hopefully it's fun for the Yankees to say, and we're next week walking on a high for them and be like, oh, yeah, the Yankees are back at it. and They're, they're in the mix of another pennant race for the division, which would be outstanding, especially a couple weeks ago. We both called them out. Um, it was us. We motivated them. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> That's what it was. They played our show and they heard us passing them. And we motivated them to start playing better. See that? Yeah. Inspiration for You're all. You're welcome. <laughs> so it's going to be a full week of baseball. I know a lot of people are going to be excited about our next sport we're going to be talking about. Here we go, baby. Football. So let's play a little more Division 1.1, and we'll be right back. s and Podcast is in no way affiliated with, associated with, produced, or endorsed by Major League Baseball or any of its affiliates. Welcome back to this week's s and Podcast show, episode 43. Once again, that was Division 1.1 with Through It All. Thanks again to them for that promo you heard at the beginning of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, football, week one. Football, week one. We're going to start off with the appetizing dish. Uh, the one o'clock game. The one o'clock game in the New York area is the New York Jets versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Or is it's, it safe to say the Tampa Bay Revises because that's all anybody wants to talk about. It's going to be an interesting and a very heavily booed reception for Revis Island coming back to uh, – the MetLife Stadium for okay, the first you say time since his injury. You say he's going to get booed. Is there going to be a video? No. <laughs> absolutely it's, no video. Now remember happen. who the organization is. Uh, no. It, it, no. It's definitely not going to be a video because every time Revis... Revis was a, obviously, Revis is Revis, who is a great Jet. But he was just... Every time there was a money situation coming on the table, he would hold out or complain. It, and that didn't stick well with a lot of Jet, jet people in the organization and everything like that. Though I highly doubt there will be any videos. There will definitely be a big chorus of boos coming down his name when they do the player introductions on Sunday. They just do player introductions? Yeah. 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 Oh, they could actually name the players on the Jet team yes. because I can't. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, Geno Smith gets his first career start. Um, ha- That's an interesting you, you defensive t- line to go up against. You got uh, Gerald McCoy in the middle. You got you got Bowers on the end. You got Akeem Spence, the rookie, in the middle there. It, it's going to be interesting with Revis in the at the secondary. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting on maybe the the Jets. Granted, they don't have anybody key names on the offense yet. Maybe they could find a way to like get something going. But the way he played against the Giants. In the preseason game a few weeks ago, and I, I don't see the confidence. I I don't I I don't I don't know where that's gonna come from. It's not gonna magically appear. Yeah. And especially when the games finally actually count, I don't see that happening. Um, the way a rookie should take the preseason. Granted, the games don't count. Yada yada yada. But you're a rookie. You don't know yeah. the feeling. So you have to go out and play 130 percent because you're fighting for a job. And honestly, Geno Smith didn't really show it to me. And then if it wasn't a Rex, if it wasn't for Rex Ryan stupidly putting Mark Sanchez in the game in the third quarter, <laughs> and fourth getting, quarter, and fourth quarter, getting lit up against the third team, there a guy who's not even on the guy team anymore. Who's not even on the <laughs> team anymore. It's just the dumbest thing you could possibly even do. And that's mm. just another reason how Mark. Uh, Rex Ryan's just a lame duck, and he's just playing out the string, even though he won't admit it. 
He's he's just he's dead man walking, and it's really just sad to see. Cause I I know people don't like Rex Ryan for his brashness and everything like that, but I actually like it. I it's it's fre- fresh Harry. He'll be the first one to admit his pitfalls, but it, it's the that awesome cockiness attitude that a New York sports fan can respect and enjoy. Yes, but I was talking to our good friend Mike about it. But and he's look done at too many su- stupid things. Now look at the successful coaches. Exactly. Belichick. How much information do you get out of Belichick Zero. for an injury? Zero. Like, half one. He's Zero. an open book to a point. To a point, he's an open book. He'll be honest about everything, and he will tell you everything, but to a point. Yeah, and he and Rex has learned, learned the hard way. He just Rex would be, I think, the past couple of years, if he just kept his mouth shut all the time and let the, the talking on the field happen... But that's not the the Ryan family gene, and you know that. So <laughs> that's not going to happen. And, he, and I think he's finally learning that. So it's just one of those, just, just one of those freaky things. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's plenty of tickets available, by the way. Plenty of tickets available, of course. It's it's just one of those. Just pull your mouth teeth in. Um, the Jets' defense is still going to be good. Trying is the best defensive coordinator in the league, <laughs> but uh, it's just one of those. It's uh, the they have too much firepower for the Jets. They're gonna find a way to pull this game out, and I say the Buccaneers are gonna win this week. You no, know what's interesting is that as bad as Josh Friedman has been, the Buccaneers were tenth passing offense and the fifteenth rushing offense. Well, Vincent Jackson is a stud. Okay. Um, Vincent the Jackson fact- is a stud. Michael Michael Wall uh, Williams is pretty actually underrated. And then you have Doug Martin, who's Doug Martin, who's supposed to be a top five running back this year. So it's going to be interesting to see how they carry it. Yeah, and then uh, their defense was thirty second against the pass, which is why you bring in Revis because you're hoping. Well, yeah, you're hoping Revis Island comes up. Yeah, well, Revis Island is Revis Island regardless, but he did come off a knee injury this year, so he might be a little shaky this year. Don't count that out, but at the end of the day, he, he should be Revis, and he's going to be geared up to play his old team. And then you have their rushing defense, which was actually ranked number one last year. Luckily for the Jets, they don't really have a rushing offense, so they don't have to worry about that. Um, what's the spread in that game? I, I didn't check. I didn't check. I don't have a spread on it. I haven't checked the spread, but it doesn't matter. We get the point. Everybody and their mother are picking the Buccaneers, unfortunately. I actually picked up the Buccaneers defense in a few leagues. Just for this week? Just for this week. <laughs> Yikes. So. Yikes. Um, yeah, you got to think Shiano's going to get them pumped up to play this game. Uh, they're in that division that nobody expects them, except for a couple people. Yeah. that Only Buccaneer fans think that. Oh, well, there are a couple people. Speaking of... Picks, picking teams. Thank you to everybody who helped us out and did the picks for our playoff teams this year for the S&D Podcast 2013 NFL Predictions. Uh, that is online. Everybody was tagged in it, so everybody has it. Um, but yeah. Ooh. Huh. There's actually more tickets available for the Giant Camps on there. Well, let's get that road trip going. Yeah. You pay for the tickets and the flight. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, Kevin Ogletree's on their team too this year. But yeah, uh, Doug Martin should be able to run against this team, to be honest with you. I think that he can have a monster game against the Jet defense. Popples isn't even dressed to practice at all, so he's definitely not playing. Um, it, it's just, it's just that they're they're not going to be hit. Culpers, Culpers is definitely not playing. Holmes is not playing, so all the key Jets are not going to be playing in the game. So it's going to be not your father's or even your era Jet team. So it's not going to be pretty. Ew. It's not going to be pretty week one at MetLife Stadium this week. Yeah, because most of our fathers, the the they only had the uh, Super Bowl three was their father's team, and then after that, you know the rest. Yeah, well, I still don't think, to be honest, I don't think Gino's the answer. No, I don't think so either. Um, I don't think he's a long term solution. I feel like they're going to end up being the team that top five pick next year, and they're going to end up having to draft the quarterback. They're <laughs> another one. Uh, they haven't learned from their mistakes um they're gonna they're gonna just have to figure it out and go through the growing pains of this year because they don't want to hurt his psyche i guess with sanchez the whole thing is messed up you don't know what's gonna happen it's just silly i think that personally i think that they're looking to blow this year up 
I, I'm I'm with that too. They're gonna look to just end this year, be done with it, go today, get to next year. Like most Jet fans say, A E T S, just end the season. Mm-hmm. So sit back, have some cold ones, Jet fans, because it's gonna be a rough ride this year, especially going from Sunday to Thursday yeah. to go to New England. <laughs> like, so yeah. All right. Well, uh, hey, take it one game at a time. Anything can happen. Maybe the Jets. You know, Smith surprises people, and we uh, get a nice win. That'd be nice. But let's see what happens. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, it is football season. That's all that matters. I mean, shout out to Kevin Burkhardt. He's calling the jacket. Yeah, congrats to Kevin for uh, finally getting called to do Major League Baseball games on Fox. So congrats to that. And National Football League games because that's what Woo-hoo. he's doing. So congrats to KB. And they're moving to the gears of the main course, New York Football Giants. Stay tuned. Uh, take listen a little more, break. Take a little break. More Division 1.1. S&D Podcast is in no way affiliated with, associated with, produced or endorsed by the National Football League or any of its affiliates. Welcome back to the S&D Podcast. Dan here with Steve. Uh, here comes the, the main course of uh, the S&D Podcast. Uh, we had a double week. advertiser. We had soups, soup with baseball, salad with the Jets, because, you know, yeah, not too many people with the Main course salad. this week with the New York football giants start their 2013-2014 season against the hated Dallas Cowboys on a Sunday night football at an 8.30 start. It's it's going to be the old-fashioned shootout, gunslinger, Wild West uh, showdown between the Giants and the Cowboys at Jerry's World. And the Giants make it 5-0 and at Jerry's World since the uh, inception of the new Dallas Cowboys Stadium. Um, the Giants have had a lot of luck and a lot of success there. Um, Eli Manning owns that place. Um, 4-0, baby. 4-0. And he he they have they scored over thirty points each time they played over there. Um, it's something about that turf that our wide receivers get wide open, and Eli Manning just throws bombs. Oh, to be fair, was it two years ago when Miles Austin was wide open? Yeah, and the lights got into his eyes, <laughs> so that was a little awkward. And JPP blocked it. The last two <laughs> the last two games at uh, the Cowboy Stadiums were two epic, crazy games that should have went either way. You know that Giants, last year was over. That shit was over, and then <laughs> something happened. Tony Romo decided to p- wake up and play. And that was the game before Sandy. You know that? It was the day before. Yeah, it was the day before Sandy. And that was, yeah. Anyway, it, it's going to be one of the, the typical giant cowboy games, especially at Dallas Stadium. Well, they call it M- AT&T pa- uh, Stadium. It will always be Jerry's World. Well, of course that. I, I know that. But I was trying to be uh, give it the technical name. But honestly... Kudos, kudos, it's going to be a fun game. Uh, yeah, It's going to be interesting to see if JPP and Anthony Spencer play two key pass rushers for each team. On the 4th, Spencer did not practice. Okay. Wednesday the 4th. JPP did practice a little bit to, with the team today. So, I see it being one of those, it's week one, Coughlin holds him out. Okay, uh, we're going to find out Friday. Um, That's JPP, just my view. The, 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 everybody from all the media outlets, they're going to find out Friday if JPP is, he's still going to make the trip to Dallas that he said, but they're going to find out. He will know by for sure on Friday. Uh, that probably means we won't find out until 7 o'clock Sunday night. Let's be real. It's Twitter world we live in. Yeah, that's true. We'll know before we'll know before Tom Coughlin gets to the mic. Yeah, this is <laughs> true. This is very true. Um, who's who's going to be your breakout player on both sides of the ball? Uh, both sides of the ball for Jets, and, I mean the Giants and Cowboys this, for this game. For each team to be su- su- success, uh, successful for this game. The guy who killed us last year in the first game. The guy who? DeMarco, DeMarco Murray. Murray. Absolutely. He's, he, to me, is the difference between the Cowboys being a Super Bowl contender or not. Okay. If he can stay healthy, it gives them that dimension that they've always missed. Okay. When the years that they had Felix Jones as their starting running back. Okay. Um, I like DeMarco Murray. He's a fast guy. He's a smart player. Another guy from Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, but the NFL has shown Oklahoma football players don't stay healthy. Well, running backs. Yeah. Well, AP is pretty awesome. So. But anywho. Um, what about the defensive side of the ball? Defensive side, I think it's going to be um, Brendan Carr. Okay. And who he defends. Put him again. Because you know he's the one. 
well, he's putting him arguably, against the no, Knicks. Uh, arguably, he's the number two because Maurice Claiborne is pretty good. Yeah, but are you put the veteran guy versus the veteran guy usually? Yeah. Are you putting him against Knicks? Or are you putting him against Cruz? I don't know. It's the it's the interchangeable thing because they both can kill you, kind of thing. I think they're gonna more slide out, slot to the right or left. That's how good Claiborne is. Right. Becoming. So I think it's more of he's gonna be the strong side DB and vice versa for Claiborne. Um, funny how you say Brendan Carr. Uh, Carr for the, the uh. The unsung player of the game for the Cowboys on the defensive side. I was actually going to go with Claiborne, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, they're both their secondary is one of the key. They're one of their key um, strong suits for this team in the last few years. And with uh, Ani uh, Kiffin's defense catered to the Tampa two style of defense, they're gonna. They're going to be able to ball hawk a little bit more than normal. So I think the secondary, the Giants have to are going to have to watch out for the safeties and the two two cornerbacks. The Giants are going to have a lot of. I hope they studied a lot of Tampa two uh, uh, defensive schemes because that's what they're going to be seeing on Sunday night. Um, as for the offense, how, how can you not say Des Bryant? Um, Des Bryant is going to he is in all shapes or form having going to have a. A breakout season this year and he the Giants can't stop him the la- last year and a half if it wasn't for some stupid mistakes early on for year one um year two if it wasn't for a pinky literally a pinky they the Giants would have blown a 21 point lead and that was a lot to do with Des Bryant just running all over us yeah um, it's it's I, I Des can't be stopped he has to be contained kind of thing so the Giants have uh, Prince and Corey Webster have a lot of work a work cut out against them this week. Um, it's going to be one of those another fun. <laughs> and of course, you can't forget Miles Austin. Miles Austin also kills the Giants, and Witten kills the Giants. It's going to be. Everybody. It'll be fair. Witten kills everybody. But Witten specifically kills the Giants. Um, Dan Connors is going to have a lot of work cut out for him. Did Witten Richard. have like ten for over a hundred last year in that game in October? Something like that. Oh, or, or it, even more. Romo, he had almost Romo, twenty. Yeah, Romo, Romo kills every. Uh, Gi- Romo kills the Giants every start he possibly can. But he'll throw picks. But he'll make it up with a lot of like you no. Know, it's one of those weird things. Like Romo has had bad pass against the Giants, but he also he also crushes us at times. So it's it's really when can we make Romo mess up? Because that's what it really comes down to. Uh, Romo will get his yardage. Romo will get his touchdowns. But at some point, Romo will cough the ball up on a t- crazy turnover or a interception or a safety. So it's up to the Giants' defensive line, get pressure, dial up the blitz, and their secondary to play tough and contain them f- as best as they can- possibly can. It's going to be a typical shootout. Um, I say Giants 35, Cowboys 35. 32 kind of thing. Before we do that, you have the Giants. For Giants side of the ball. Giants side of the ball. Um, who do you have defensively and offensively? Okay. De- defensively, I'm going to go I'm going to go with David Wilson. Offensively. Offensively. It's going to be interesting to see how David Wilson gets the 30 thir- the workload, the workload of being on the field pretty much the whole entire game. Uh I know he was able to do it in West uh, Virginia Tech, obviously, but it's going to be interesting to see how much of a workload he can handle um, because you know Darrell Scott and Michael Cox are not really going to be getting any carries at all, especially a week one against a division opponent on Sunday Night Football. I, I could highly doubt that. I still see them coming in. I see uh, I see Scott being a, Oh, they'll, they'll, a they'll definitely come in. I'm not saying blocker. that. They're not. They'll definitely come in in certain situations, but... Wilson is going to be on the field 90% of the time. Okay, I agree with that. Okay, and defensively? Defensively, I'm going to have to go... Um, like, well, you mentioned DeMarco Murray as the key yeah. guy for the Cowboys. Yeah. I'm going to have to say Dan Connors. Um, Dan Connors is the new voice and quarterback of the uh, defense. Hopefully, they, uh, they he gets the uh, defensive line and their fellow linebackers in the right spots to cl- plug holes and everything like that. On the other, per- I'll go, I'll go with two people, him and Antrell Roll, of course, because Antrell Roll is going to be the quarterback in the secondary, making sure all the players are going to be in 
particular spots, and he'll still find a way to get make 10 tackles. So it's going to be those two players on defense for the Giants to have a key game. How about you? Okay, offensively, I'm just going to give a lot of guys – the entire offensive line. Okay. I that okay. The entire <laughs> offensive line is the key. Pretty much. For the I, Giants. Of course. Because they gotta be the ones to open the hole. There are let's see. We don't know if David Boss is playing. Yeah, he's game time. He's a game time, so who knows who's gonna be in the middle. I don't know where Kevin Booth's playing. The rookie's playing, Snee's playing, and Beatty's playing. Yep. It's gonna be interesting where they're gonna line up uh where they're gonna line up Pascal a lot this week. <laughs> also, if if Boss can't play, if Boss plays and gets hurt, what's gonna happen? When Boss got hurt in the Colts game, they were moving the ball, and then they just stopped mm-hmm. as soon as he came out. It's a whole new different well, line. They'll they'll just move within the offensive line. I'll move Booth to center and everything. Like in the preseason, they'll give Cordell a shot because it's the preseason and he's the second depth on the center right. chart. This is real games that count. So they're going to go what they rely on. They know Kevin Booth has done it before, so he'll be the center. No question about it. So What about defense? Defensively, I'm going to go Corey Webster. Okay. It's his, it's his year to shine. It is his year to shine. He's got to step up this year. This is a rough game for him to... This is shut down one guy. Stop <laughs> one guy. That's all he's got to do. It's going to be a rough one. Don't, don't let Witten, Austin... And Des beat us. Let one of them beat us. Mm-hmm. And I, I could see that. I, I just think it's not going to be his week. Because you got to think that it's going to be whoever's guarding Des and a safety. Yeah. Whoever's guarding Witten and a Connors and a safety on Witten. Really, the one guy you trust is Webster to be by himself. Yeah. So Webster's my guy, but I am going to pick the Giants to win this week. I mean, the Giants. Yeah. It's the Giants uh, in Dallas Stadium. It's going to go 5-0. and Dallas Stadium, Cowboys Stadium, Jerry's World, AT&T Stadium. It's going to be 30. Mama it's Bill. G- it's going to be 35-32, G-Men. Higher. I'm going to say someone gets in the 40s. Okay. I can see that, but. I can see one of those 41-38 games. Both teams play inconsistent every now and then, so I could see the 35-32 score. You know what would be funny? This becomes that Rare giant cowboy game that's 21 17. I'm all for it. <laughs> I'm all for that. <laughs> Make our uh, defense look good. <laughs> of course, hopefully, Giants way, but that uh, going the Giants way, but um, I, it's not happening. It's going to be a heart attack city kind of game. Um, I'm not going to be on SD podcast Twitter that night. I can guarantee that. Check our personal Twitter that night, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Yeah, so, um, I think the Giants are going to try to take care of business, um, but I can't. it's just one of those games that if the Giants lose, not shocked at all. You know who I think could actually have a pretty good week? It's Myers. Myers could have a good week. I think so. And With the Cowboys changing to a 4-3 this year, it's okay. going to be interesting it's to see. Inter- it's, it's going to open inter- up holes. And know who's going to have a at least one deep ball pass that's going to go for a completion is Lewis Murphy. I haven't seen him all preseason. And they're waiting for it. They're waiting for it. So I think he's going to have one big play. And then Ruben Randall is going to be the typical third receiver that normally kills the Cowboys for Eli Manning. That was Mario Manningham. Oh, I have Randall back. on two touchdowns this week. That was what Manningham was a few years ago and what what Steve Smith was the oh, year yeah. before that. And we didn't have that last year, really, but we still found ways to kill them. So this year, it's going to be Ruben Randall's game to shine. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, but right now, we're going to go play a little more Division 1.1, and we're going to come back and talk about the rest of the couple games around the league and end the show for the night. All right. S&D Podcast is in no way affiliated with, associated with, produced or endorsed by the National Football League or any of its affiliates. Welcome back to the SND Podcast Show on the Schmuck Sports Network. Once again, that was Division 1.1 with Through It All. Make sure to check them out on Facebook. Remember, t-shirts, if you would like one, they're buttoned down like denim. Sh- like, uh, uh, how would you explain it? They're like uh, biker short shirts. Yes, with the logo on the heart. Um, $20, large and extra large. And if you would like a trucker hat with the logo on it, $10. Just let us know. We'll hook you up with them. Um, 
But we're going to give some picks for around the league. We're going to do this every week, pick a couple of games um, that we're going to talk about for a little bit and give our predictions. And all of our predictions will go up on the page, of course, so you can keep them. Also, keep in mind, we would like to stay for the record that if you go to Vegas with our picks and you lose, that it's not our fault. We're not experts. I'm going to say. Okay, let's start it off with this week. This week also, we're not going to do that one special random game because it's just too crazy. What, what we're normally going to do is we're going to do... Uh, There's we'll do too the... many marquee matchups this week to pick a random game. Right. What we'll do is a random game. Like Each of us will have one random game that but we didn't talk about together. We, we, yeah, there was a lot of games that we just are too good to pass up for this week. So... Let's start off with the first game of the season, Broncos-Ravens. Who do you, who do you have in this game? Broncos-Ravens is going to be fun. Uh, you got to think Denver is going to come out with feistiness after last year. Uh, Dumerville being on the other sideline, it'll be interesting, really interesting to see how the Ravens play. No Ray Lewis. Yeah, well, a lot, of, a lot of starters not coming back. A lot of starters not coming back. A lot of injuries to the Ravens. Um, I think the Broncos are going to pull this one out. The Broncos are going to pull it out. They have too good of an offense not to. Um, and uh, being home the the first time ever that the, the, the ret- returning Super Bowl champions are not playing at home, which is also ridiculous. Excuse me. And Stupid it's just, Orioles. It, the Broncos are just a better team right now, so I'm going with the Broncos. Yeah, agreed with the Broncos. Um, the next matchup is a 1 o'clock game on Sunday. It's a division matchup. It's okay. going to be the Saints hosting the Falcons, I believe it is. Yes, it's the Saints home. It's the Falcons. All right, you take that one. I'm going Saints because it's the first game back for uh, Coach uh, Sean Payton for his year suspension for the uh, whole uh, Whatever you want to call yeah it. the whole injury gate. Um, the Saints, Saints, Saints fans and Saints are going to be too jacked up, and Falcons are going to fight, but it's still. It's still going to be an awesome fight seen in Saint, uh, New Orleans, and the Saints are going to take care of business with that game, and I see them winning. Yeah, I see the Saints also. I just feel like they're going to come out being like, all right, you remember what we did two years ago? And Exactly. It's, it's, it's our division. It's our... Yes, kiss our asses. Um, and you just know that place is going to be rocking. Oh, yeah, not not a, without a doubt. And that's a huge rivalry game is on top of everything. So this, I see the Saints coming out on top. All right. And the next game we're going to talk about is 4 o'clock. In honor of our friend Vin. Big Vin. Game's for you. The Packers at the Niners. A repeat of la- one of the divisional matchups from last season. And it's in at Candlestick Park. So. The, la- the f- last first home game of the season for that place. The last season at Candlestick Park. This is going to be another shootout. Um... Like how we talked about the Giants Cowboys game is going to be a shootout. Um, Aaron Rodgers is going to be seek some sort of revenge against the 49ers last season, but no shape or ha- no reason for the Niners not to have a good game because their Packers defense is not what it used to be. It's not your father's Green Bay Packers team, so it's going to be a shootout. I say the Niners are going to pull out the win. I'm going to disagree and go with the Packers. This week. Aaron Rodgers is going to pull it out. Yes. I also have him on a couple teams. So I need him to go for three touchdowns. Three to four touchdowns. How does that sound? Um, but yeah, I think the Packers are going to end up pulling it out. Uh, Rodgers wants to... Rodgers won an MVP last year, right? Wasn't last year's MVP? Mm-hmm. Win the league MVP. MVP. Oh, that's right. Two years ago. I think last year, Rodgers didn't like what happened last year, though. Yes. He wants to come out and prove it. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with Kaepernick also. That would definitely going to be interesting to see. Look at that. Okay, one last game for the week. The game that everybody's been talking about, the other NFC East division game. Uh, the Redskins, the return of RG3 after his uh, hurtful injuries against the Seahawks last year's playoff game or versus the newly uh, Philadelphia Eagles without Andy Reid for the first time since 1999 um, with Chip Kelly at the reins. Um, it's going to be a crazy scene at Washington. Games in Washington. Yeah, the game's in Washington. It's going to be a crazy scene. Um, it's going to be a close game, but the Redskins are going to pull it out because the crowd's just going to be too jacked up, and RG3 is going to find a way to pull his RG3 magic, and I think they're going to find a way to win. Yeah, I think it's going to be one of those, okay, Redskins are at home, Monday Night Football. Exactly. Crowd's going to lead them to victory type thing. Yeah. Um, That's just my view on that. Um. The fact that RG3 is playing 
yeah, yeah that that jacks up the crowd even more about more so uh it's rg3 is a different kind of animal and he's he is a folk hero in dc oh yeah, so, yeah no question last about year. It. so it's it's going to be amazing to see that atmosphere next monday night i am interested to watch the eagle offense me, me too it the hopefully Vic did they gel does, did it gel yet does, yeah does, does they Mike, know it Exactly. Does Michael Vick gel in that offense? Which he should. You got to think guys who could see it in that offense. McCoy, Sean Jackson should be able yeah. to succeed in that offense. Would I be shocked? Of course not because it's a division game and the Eagles are, they do have talent. They just haven't been able to produce on the field the last two years. Right. So those are our picks for this week. Uh, like we said, later on in the year, we'll have that one other matchup also during the weeks. Um, tonight was a pack show. Tonight was a packed show. It's going to be like that for the rest of the year, and I'm excited about that. Yeah, because October, think about it. October, October is going to be hockey, hockey, baseball, playoffs, and NFL football. It's going to and be And then insane. the end of the October starts the NBA but, season. Yeah, it's going to be nuts. It's going to be awesome, and it's going to be nuts. So enjoy our cluster. Uh, yes. Stay tuned on Facebook. Stay tuned on Instagram, Twitter, all that fun, fun jazz. Stick tuned, enjoy your football, and have a great weekend, guys. Enjoy week one. Stay safe for week one. Yeah. Most importantly, stay safe for week and one. And have fun. Most of all, have Happy fun. Jewish New Year. Happy yes. Rosh Hashanah to all those that are celebrating. And have a great week. Bye-bye, guys.